Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to do a bit of a different video. I was thinking of what I could do uh, factory related for a video today and I was looking through and remembered that a few days ago our seating, uh, one of the Factorio developers, did a Q&A on Reddit and uh, then several months ago, uh, three months to be exact, uh, Kovrex, the uh, founder of, of the team actually, uh, did an AMA. I figured it'd be kind of fun to, to go over some of the stuff in here because there's some really interesting and good, uh, you know, solid Factorio related info, obviously because the devs are the ones answering, so it's it's uh, pretty solid information and some really interesting stuff here. So. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. I, I thought it would just be something kind of fun to do, uh, kind of like the Friday Facts discussion. Just go through it, you know, read through it, give some of my own thoughts and uh, and stuff like that. So we'll start with Corex's here because uh, this is a bit more, I would say, like game content related, and uh, our seatings is a lot more technical related, uh, technical just because that's mostly what he does. Uh, but still, some really interesting stuff in there. So we'll start with uh, Corex's here. This is three months ago, so not too long ago. Um, so here's a really, really interesting one because tons of people ask about this and I'm actually going to hop to full screen here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit for us just so you guys can read this a bit easier, hopefully. All right. Uh, so do you guys have any plans to add height either in basic fake method like command and conquer one using draw train, which uh, looks like height or with methods like having floors on a factory that yet let you build up above the ground above your current factory and have belts go up and down slopes. Uh, so that's. Question one. The other one is to introduce other planets with different alien types and such, um, or any plans to extend space to allow an orbital platform where you can create a distribution hub to allow resources to come from the planet and be shipped to other planets. So that actually sounds really, really cool, uh, you know, kind of going into different uh, planets and stuff. Uh, so Kovrex answers, uh, the fake height was considered many times, mainly from the graphics department, as it makes the game look much better. Uh, however, it was discarded for the basic game as it would require a lot of problems to be solved, slope belts, rails, trains. Uh, there's also this problem with blueprints. The player would want to make everything flat anyway, so he can just extend his blueprints in, pre in a predictable way. Uh, you know, having to adjust your game to the train might be fun in the early stage of the game, but it would be just painful later on, which I can kind of understand. I think that maybe comes more down to play style. Uh, in terms of, and I wish these ads would go away. I'm actually, I am using an ad blocker uh, just for this, but apparently it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so so yeah, this is uh, this is a really interesting discussion because I've talked a lot with uh, a ton of people. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty uh, hot subject really about doing height uh, in the game because I think it could add a lot uh, to the depth, a lot of depth to the game. Uh, no pun intended, really. But uh, but yeah, so the problem is, is it. I imagine it would be really difficult since Factorio is a 2D game. You could do kind of a fake thing like Command and Conquer, uh, but you know, Corex has a point. I think it comes down to playstyle. I mean, personally, I would love uh, having height, even if I have to adapt my factory to it. In fact, I would like that more uh, in some cases than than having just a flat plane to just build an infinite factory on. But I do see the point he's making. Uh, you know, real levels like underground would be easy to do, but it would introduce new problems as you don't see both levels at the same time. It's much harder to understand the factory layout compared to simple TD, uh, 2D view. It would also diminish the important part of logistics challenge. Um, the space part would be a natural part of the space expansion that we might or might not do in the future. So this is interesting. They have talked about this uh, previously that, uh, you know, Factorio version one, which actually isn't that far off of version 16 is underway um, in terms of development and will be out probably within the next couple months. And then that is going to turn into version one. Uh, and that's also why I wanted to do this now, because I feel like this is kind of an interesting time to discuss uh, like content and stuff behind the game. Um, since there's kind of a lull in, uh, in features being added right now and such. So, uh, so anyway, they've discussed this previously that they they might if you know if they're up to it if they're not burnt out which hopefully they're not uh, uh consider doing expansions whether it be for a space platform or maybe uh you know different heights or just new new stuff that's uh, an expansion rather than you know one factorial 1.1 or something um essentially what they've said is that uh once you know the 1.0 is released and stable that that they're going to pretty much call that finished for the base game 
which I think is totally fine, totally understandable, already has an insane amount of content as it is. Um, so really interesting answer and discussion there about the heights. I can see the benefits and disadvantages and it certainly wouldn't be easy to implement. Uh, and then this kind of follows right into what I was just saying. Uh, you know, this person asked, how long uh, do you plan to continue working on the game? One of the latest Friday facts said that there isn't uh, any more content planned other than the artillery train and maybe Spider-Tron until release, um, but we continue to add features and gameplay mechanics afterwards. And he asked, do you still have plans for a new game? Uh, you know, so Correct says, you know, we don't want to tie our hands with promises. Um, the problem is that there's no indie game company I know of that uh, made a hit, and after that they made a completely different game that was as good as their first, which is understandable. Um, expansion packs or sequels were usually the way to continue rolling uh, for these teams as they basically extended their unique uh, game idea. On the other hand, we might try something completely different sooner or later as the uh, idea of making Factor 7 one of 60 doesn't sound so great. So, uh, you know, kind of a interesting uh, generic response, but uh, definitely open to, you know, having expansions or, or stuff like that, DLCs, and... Uh, I think that could be quite interesting. There's still a lot of features that they could potentially add if they wanted to that uh, could easily be, you know, put into a, an expansion or something. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, here's a question. What made you decide to get Factorio uh, Linux support? We're a relatively small community and many developers leave us off the bottom of their list, but you supported us. And uh, this is one thing that's good to touch on because Factorio, these guys, among all the other great things, is they just give so much support. I mean, it works on Linux, it works on Windows, they have a Mac version. Now, some of it isn't necessarily as supported as others. I think Windows is obviously the most so, but still, the fact, I mean, they released it for Linux and, and Mac, and uh, and it, it plays on there, you know, the latest versions. Uh, you know, they may not pay quite as much attention to it, but they I still see that they fix bugs and stuff for it uh, every once in a while, so definitely good there. And he says, as C++, uh, C++ and Allegro are multi-platform already, it wasn't so much additional work. The first three programmers working on Factorio were me, uh, working in Windows, uh, Thomas and uh, for Mac, and Cube for Linux. So that's kind of interesting, uh, which devs worked on what. Uh, so we just naturally used our systems. Uh, you know, and then that continues down. Uh, what did you initially decide to build Factorio with? Um, or how did you arrive at your uh, current implementation? And uh, he talks kind of about Minecraft, was Factorio initially done in Java, much like Minecraft. And uh, this is actually interesting uh, because they did start in Java. Um, the switch from Java happened long before any performance problems would arrive. It happened when I started to explore the Java possibilities of data structures and memory management. Uh, so they, you know, they found some problems with Java and then uh, transitioned on to, you know, C++ and Lua and uh, whatever else it's written with. So I think it's probably better for that. Uh, oh, this so this one's interesting. Your, uh, your game is currently one of the most relatively reviewed games in Steam and it, and it isn't a AAA title. Do you currently have plans to rapidly push development at an accelerating pace? So this is kind of related to the previous questions a bit. Um, you know, do you plan to continue with the current staff? Um, he says, you know, if you mean hiring 50 people to try and do it bigger, then I would say no. We have quite clear plan of finishing Factorio and hiring a lot of people at this stage wouldn't make it faster. Factorio clearly doesn't have as big a potential as Minecraft. Our game is much more specialized, so our audience is much smaller. Um, but we're more than happy with the way it is. So I think it might have been after this at some point. It was fairly recently, a month or two ago. I think... Uh, in one of the Friday Facts, they said they brought on like three new team members, or maybe it was an answer to a post someone made in the Friday Facts thing or something, um, but they, they have grown their team uh, by several more members in the last month or so. They have, you know, kind of increased things a little bit there, which is obviously uh, good news as long as they're all compatible. Uh, and, and he does have a point, you know, Factorio is a lot more specialized and kind of more of a, a special, like, niche uh, game and uh, genre, but honestly, it's, I mean, they sold, you know, not, not too long ago, they had the one million copies sold party, I mean, for an indie game that's not even fully released yet in such a, you know, specialized, you know, genre, for so selling a million copies is no small feat at all. So I, I can see it going. I mean, at this point, you know, it has, like, I, I looked on Steam, you know, every once in a while I check the reviews on Steam and stuff just because a lot of them are really interesting and funny, um, and I just kind of like keeping up with that stuff. But uh, 
you know, at this point, it has, like, a couple thousand more reviews than even, like, RimWorld or something, which is really well known in the indie community. Um, of course, that may just be because Factorio people just want to review it more. I don't know. Not, not necessarily that there's more people who bought it or anything, but I think it's doing quite well in its own right. Uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single one here. I mean, this would take hours. Uh, just kind of the top ones here. So, uh, do you currently... Uh, your game is... Okay, we did that. Uh, are there any notable features that were cut because they were beyond the scope of the core gameplay? Uh, and then he says, uh, similarly, I often hear players talk about you guys adding an option for this or that, and it would be a really simple addition, in quotes. And maybe it would be, but I worry that it may cause too much clutter. Uh, many, most of the ideas and features were cut, which is a natural process, so it's really hard sometimes. We try to maximize the possibilities while minimizing the amount of features and machines you have. This is why we didn't put the loader into vanilla when we have stack inserters, for example. Uh, we also discarded the tiny power pole for circuit networks. We even had graphics for it. I kind of remember that. They had like a special like circuit connecty pole or something that they had done like a Friday Facts about and then discarded it. Um, and I think, unfortunately, I think Spidertron is one of those things. Uh, for a while, you know, they talked about it. They didn't have a graphic. They like used kind of a mock-up with inserters and stuff. Um, but to my knowledge, unless they sneak it in, they do sneak stuff in these updates, but uh, to my knowledge, that is no longer being added in the base game. Um, they are doing the artillery uh, train wagon. Uh, they, they've said like pretty much for sure that's something that's coming in 16, but uh, I believe Spider-Tron was taken off the list. So they have had to cut back stuff, which, you know, again, totally understandable. Um, so, uh, you know, asking, can you talk a bit about the... Uh, development process and uh you know i still feel that we are not doing it as properly as we should most of the bugs are quite easy things so making 20 buck fixes in two days with several people isn't that impressive which i still think it is i mean i think <laughs> i think these guys don't don't give themselves enough credit when you compare you know the factorio team to most other um you know development teams like they fix bugs so quick and they do such a good job with even just not having that many bugs, uh, you know, or, or at least not that many game-breaking bugs compared to a lot of other developers. I think they do a really, really good job here. Uh, and then I think we may end here, or the next one for, for uh, Covrex is, if you start work on a brand new Factorio 2 tomorrow, what would you do differently, both technologically and gameplay-wise? Um, wouldn't use Allegro, uh, some mainstream library. I would give more thought to the GUI application logic uh, apart from the core game logic. I would use different scripting language than Lua, maybe even our own. That would be pretty interesting. I would either wait for the JI, JIA language or write our own. Um, so the compile times are smaller. It does take quite a while for them to compile, I believe, like several hours. Um, I would consider 3D, but I'm not sure about it. Lots of problems would disappear, new problems would appear. So this is actually a really interesting one um, that you know, he, he, he would, you know, in, in this hypothetical situation, uh, consider 3D. And uh, there is a game, what's it called? I believe it's called Farlight Explorers or Farlight, Farlight Explorer. It was like literally a mirror almost, a Factorio, but in three, in like third person and in like 3D and stuff. Um, I'm not sure what's happened to it. I know it was like super early and stuff, but it, it really was like, it was like, just Factorio, pretty much. You know, there's transport belts, factories, you know, you've crashed on a planet, there's like inserters, uh, but it was in third person, um, or first person, rather, um, but like, you know, actually 3D. Um, so, not top down. Uh, so that's, that's interesting, you know, I, I think it would be an interesting take on it. Uh, you know, we would probably change the core concepts of how things work. Uh, belt inserter assembler machine uh, inserter belt uh, repetitiveness could be di diversified, which I think is uh, really good that, that, that they recognize this because, you know, when you do think about it, that does get pretty repetitive that, I mean, pretty much that's just what you do, like, for everything, uh, but not, not that I'm really complaining, but it is good that they recognize this. Um, it might be fun to try to be a little more realistic in the process as long as it doesn't make the game too tedious. I... Uh, electronics are harder to do and you can't just make gears from iron plates that easy. So kind of adding some more depth, uh, similar maybe to Bob's Mods or something uh, that, you know, has all these intermediate steps to actually make the thing. Um, 
I think this is the last one we'll end on here. Uh, Factorio has over the years got multiple performance increases by code optimizations. With this experience, what tips do you have for making code bases that are easily optimizable? Um, you know, it says, I don't think there's something very specific on the code that is optimizable. Op uh, obviously, the more structured and clean the code is, the better, mainly with no redundancies and code repetitions. Uh, some of the optimizations make the code much more complex, so it's always better to start with something clean. Um, the thought usually is, what would be the most annoying repetitive activity I would have to do if I were to run this code manually? It's a good way to think about it. Um, so kind of, again, about not using Allegro. Um, actually, this is interesting. Um, is there any silly features that you know won't be relevant and would take too much work to implement, but you kind of want to do anyway? I want to improve the logic of robot-based logistics, including construction bots. So this is pretty interesting. The goal is to avoid situations where your local bots do half the work in five seconds, or robots far away that were assigned to the other part of the tar take minute, uh, you know, it takes minutes to arrive. And I'm laughing because I, I know exactly what this is, and I'm sure most of you guys do. It's really frustrating, actually, that, you know, if you're, like, in construction area of, like, a main network and you have your own personal bots and you, like, deconstruct something or go to construct something that, like, your bots will do a little bit of it, your personal bots, and then you'll have to wait forever because the rest of it will be assigned to bots in the network that may be like on the entire other side of the factory. Um, or even if they're right there, they may have to go pick up the materials on the en entire other side of the factory. Um, even if, you know, even if you have all this stuff on you and your personal bots are capable of doing it, uh, the assigning of it is really weird. Um, so pretty much he just says what I just said. Uh, it proved to change and possibly break a lot of things in the system. So that's why they haven't changed or improved it. But, uh, you know, it, it's cool that he kind of realizes um, that's an issue. So we're going to move on to our seedings here. I don't want to take too, too long on this. I thought it would just be interesting to read through this with you guys. So uh, our seeding did this uh, three days ago. And uh, he's uh, he's the main optimizations guy. Uh, we, we mentioned him quite a lot. Uh, you know, when, when Will and I play and stuff, he, he's helped out a lot with uh, fixing our bugs and desyncs and all that. Uh, so, is there anything uh, that took an insane amount of time compared to the original estimate, uh, like a little feature or bug fix? Uh, the Blueprint Library, yeah. So, <laughs> Blueprint Library has had so many issues, which, uh, I mean, it wasn't like a super simple thing to do, but, like, so many of the bug fixes have been with Blueprint Library, and so many of the desyncs and broken parts have been from the Blueprint Library. Um, so I think he definitely is spot on there. Uh, you know, like I said, some of this is really more technical, so I may not read through all of it. Uh, I will link, obviously, both these in the description if you want to just read through them all yourself. Um, uh, did you expect people to build insane factories and reach the hardware limits? What was that oh shit moment <laughs> uh, for the team? That's always expected. If you don't limit what the player can do, uh, then they aren't limited. Most games limit you... Uh, to some tiny amount of units so you can't ever hit that limit factorio does no such limiting so that's uh that's a good point and, and i i think overall uh, i'm really grateful that that they don't limit you obviously you're going to hit the hardware limit when you build these mega factories but i think allowing the person to do that if they want was a really good design choice uh, you know, a lot of games like a lot of rts games and stuff you know they give you a population limit or a just an overall like entity count limit or something uh which they, they do that pretty much for, for this reason i would imagine that to to stop you from hitting that hardware barrier uh, but at the same time is it it really even har limits harder i can't talk uh what what you can actually do in the game you know i would rather have it be like factorio where you know if i want to build a huge whatever that you know my limiting factor is my computer, not what the developers think my limiting factor needs to be. So I'm really glad that they did this. Uh, more stuff for programming languages. Um, so more talk about Lua. If you're interested in this stuff, definitely you can come read this. Uh, lots of discussion here. Okay, so many, many questions from this. Uh, some random stuff. Uh, does the office have uh, bean bags and a pinball machine? Uh, he says, no, we do have a rubber ball. You can sit on that rolls around and gets used from time to time. Uh, you know, the team is known for its patch and update speed. What allows your studio to release at such speed? Um, he says, symbolize stack traces in every crash. That's uh, the most useful thing when it comes to fixing problems. Uh, 
so much so that most simple problems of crash can be diagnosed without opening the source code. Also, long-term employees that know the code base and can fix bugs without having to first learn how everything around the problem area works. So essentially, yeah, you know, they're super experienced in the way that they, uh, you know, do their crash reports and stuff and desync reports. It makes it really easy for them, usually. Uh, I, uh, when we've talked with our seating previously, he has said that sometimes it does take a couple hours, like, scanning through all this uh like stuff in the desync reports or whatever to figure out what was wrong. But usually it makes it really easy for them to, to pump out these fixes really quick, which is, is pretty cool. Um, uh, is the high patch rate more demanding for the developers or does it make your job easier? It's so knowing strictly from not wanting to commit while release runs because it makes uh, the get history messy. Other than that small annoyance, it doesn't really affect development. Um, when Factorio is done, will you be developing more games? You know, that's not really his area, so doesn't know. Um, are there plans to improve vehicle handling? Plans, yes. Will they happen? No idea. I, again, I feel like there's probably something that won't make it into the base game right now, just because unless they sneak it into 16, I, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Um, uh, now when I switch roles, I have to completely clear my logistics requests and dump slots and reassign them. Um, I want to add the ability to save low load logistics info in your player figuring out how it will work GUI wise is the only thing that stopped me from doing it so uh, this is really good to hear because being able to like save like specific layouts or whatever for your logistics info like certain request templates or whatever would be really nice so he just have to has to figure out uh, you know the GUI issues which I, I know there's obviously members on the team that, that do work with that so uh, it is good to know that he, he wants to do that uh, because that would be something super nice uh, so, uh, one question, do you guys have heart and goals in mind or any sort of concrete vision for uh, what the finished game will look like? Uh, there's always been a roadmap, so he links it here as a general guide for what we wanted to do, but as we work towards the things listed, we often find other things that are more important or find something we uh, thought we wanted to do just isn't feasible. So I guess there's no concrete vision for what the finished game looks like, just a general and most idea if we, uh, ideas we've already shared either on that roadmap or on Friday Pack. So, yeah, and I think they keep the roadmap fairly updated. Um, we take a quick look here, as I realize I haven't gone back to full screen. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> for 16, more high-res stuff, GUI reskin, new terrain generation, battle optimization, artillery training, mod portal improvements, thank God. <laughs> General update optimizations, allowed loading games with different mod settings, um, and they've taken dirty mining out. So that's the current plan, pretty much. Uh, let's go back to full screen here. Sorry about that. We were still zoomed in, though, I believe. Unless it... Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Has there been any code system that needed massive rework, overhauls, and underlying complexity and feature of the game group? Uh, multiplayer logic and network code. Um, a major change was done in 14. I kind of remember that. It was a pretty huge thing. Um... Are there any now that could really use one before uh, one release? Oh, oh, like like overhauls. Uh, the graphics engine, it runs on outdated DirectX 9 and some outdated version of OpenGL. <laughs> so uh, so maybe they'll, they'll get to that before uh, 0.1 comes out, or 1.0, rather. Um, I don't think I'd call... Uh, what, what if anything has been your favorite thing added to the game that emerged via uh, feature creep? I don't think I'd call it feature creep, but the pipette tool has become my favorite feature. <laughs> This is funny. So much so that I no longer use my inventory or the toolbar and just zoom out to find the entity I'm looking for to build it the time I want to build it. I find that kind of funny because I think sometimes it would definitely be faster to just use your toolbar. But uh, once you get used to it, the pipette tool is really, really nice. Um, so talking about, you know, issues with uh, graphics not working on some GPUs... Uh, this is actually kind of an interesting one. What are the, some of the difficulties of not having the team all in the same office time zone? How do you guys deal with it? Um, because, yeah, so they have several, I, I think, I don't know if our seating is considered a contractor or actually, like, like a full-time employee. I mean, he definitely puts in enough hours to be a full-time employee. Uh, but he's actually in the U.S. Uh, and, uh, and, and they're obviously in Czech Republic. So what, once in a while, like for 15 in the big updates, he goes over there for a month or two, like before the release. But typically, he stays in the U.S. where he lives. Um, so dealing with that, uh, it, this is a good question. 
Um, communication mostly, not being able to turn around and ask someone a question about something, but having to wait several hours depending on uh, the time before they're awake in a computer. Uh, you know, he says he deals with it by working 70 to 80 hours a week. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> that is a lot of work time. So I can attempt to just answer the questions myself without having to ask others. Um, and then kind of more about the uh, symbolized stack traces w with the crashes um, that players can give you. Uh, that alone is the single most useful thing that the game does. It most In most cases, we can diagnose a bug and what will be needed to fix it by stack trace alone. It saves so much time. Um, okay, what feature are you most proud of in the game? Uh, what programming hack are you most prou proud and ashamed of? A uh, feature that he wrote, probably the ability to edit blueprints. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> uh, not editing blueprints uh, would definitely be missed. So, you know, if you right-click on a blueprint to, to edit it, and then you can change stuff and, like, remove items and stuff from it. I, get, I didn't actually know our seating wrote that, but uh, but that that's super helpful. Um, I can't think of any hacks we have in the typical sense. I'm sure there are some, but the only things I can think of are small things like... I don't like having to do logic in this function every time it's ran. It would rather be done through some event. Um, so kind of like automated stuff. Uh, favorite optimization? Uh, that would be render-related performance related to large, uh, large logistic networks on the overlay information when you mouse over logistics container. If you ever played uh, version 10 or earlier, a logistics network of 100 plus row ports with a few hundred... Uh, I can't talk. Logistic containers was enough to drop you to 5 FPS. Uh, yeah, I remember this. I remember also with the, the RoboPorts. Uh, I don't know if it was that far back. It might have been like two different times they optimized it. But uh, at one point, uh, the RoboPorts, like the connecty lines, you know, they would actually display every single like possible like connecty line. <laughs> Uh, so when, when you had a, a mega factory or, or even a decent medium-sized factory with tons of row ports in it and you moused over one, it would just completely lag out your game and fill the entire screen with the little yellow dotted lines because it would be uh, drawing those paths, right, to every single row port in, like, every possible direction. Uh, and now, obviously, it doesn't do that. So that was a, a big optimization for sure. Um... Okay, some stuff about tests. There was a really good one. I'm trying to find here to end this out. Uh, who is a madman, uh, one behind all this, uh, Kovrex. So, yeah, like we said, Kovrex uh, founded it. He did do an interview. If you want to check it out, he, there's a link here. Uh, it was mentioned in a Friday Facts, I think, as well, uh, where he uh, has an interview. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find the one I'm looking for. This is pretty interesting. Is there a way to use the built-in pathfinding uh, BIDER AI system for water or air traveling into these? Should someone decide to mod them in it? Um, examples of use would be cargo ships or flying enemies. The current pathfinding system was heavily built around the BIDERs and how they use it, not saying it's impossible to repurpose uh, to also work in other situations, but caching and system it was built around expects it to be used by BIDERs and such. It's not simple. So like the AAI vehicles mod uh, uses BIDER logic and it is a cool mod, but they do some really derpy stuff sometimes, and uh, that's because it uses the BIDER logic. So it can be done, um, but not, like, great. Um, and then actually, th this person asked, would you be willing to share details on the train pathfinding algorithm? And our seating actually links a GitHub uh, thing that actually just shows all the code for it, which is really interesting. If you're, uh, you know, if you understand that type of stuff, I don't really understand most of it. Uh, but... If you understand it, then uh, definitely we're taking a look at it. Kind of uh, would probably help understanding how, why the trains do some stuff and why they don't do stuff. Um, I'm trying to... Uh, let's see. Oh, this one's... Uh, what is the most surprising thing you ever saw anyone build or do in Vectorio? Why are every single combinator in the solo network to the circuit network not realizing that wiring just one would get the same result? Oh dear, yeah, that, that sounds like something I probably would have done when I first started playing... Um, let's see, there's, ooh, this, so here's one about fluid mechanics, which is kind of discussed quite a bit, uh, around players. Do you have any plans for revisiting fluid mechanics or at least making the current system easier to work with? Um, possibly that making a really realistic fluid flow system isn't uh, computationally feasible, so if anything, the fluid flow mechanics would be simplified if we do change them. 
Uh, most of the confusion now comes from the fact that fluid flow is seemingly random based off of the order that entities are updated. If that was fixed, I think it would go a long way to improve confusion of how it works. Um, let's see. Okay, here's one I was looking for from uh, Zedith, who, who you, a lot of you guys probably know. He's a uh, part of the engineer team, plays with Will and I uh, every so often. Um, so he essentially talks about multi-threading. And the reason that I bring this up is because so many people ask about this <laughs> and our seating is answered so many times, uh, but people still ask, which is understandable. You know, they, they want more performance out of the game. You know, they're like, why is not Factory uh, multi-threaded or, you know, why, you know, or, or is it going to be multi-thread support and stuff? Um, so he just says, uh, regarding the optimization of the game, um, a lot of people assume that by multi-threading the game, we would be able to make insane size factories that would run it neat 60 ups um you know and then he goes on to say why that probably wouldn't actually work uh, and then down here he says um let's see do you think it would be uh ever viable to run an insane size factory i'm thinking five to ten k science packs a minute kind of thing at you know like 60 ups um and he's act asking if there's any large optimization improvements we can expect um so this, this is an interesting, this is a good answer because this kind of, hopefully for anyone who was wondering, uh, you know, answers questions about multi-threading. Um, so he says, I think we're getting quite close to the limits as it is now in terms of like optimization. Unless we change how the game mechanics work in a probably large way, removing a lot of the finer interactions, I don't think the game will ever get to a point where five to 10, 10 K science packs a minute would be viable. Well, I mean, I'm, dim, I'm doing 4K and supporters map and I'm still confident we're going to get 60 UPS, so that would be interesting. I, I, I'm not sure we can go much above that. 5K may be possible. Uh, 10K, definitely not at this point, I don't think. Um, possibly the same logic for fluid pipes, heat pipes, um, as was done for belt optimizations. So that's good news. That would be great. Um, you know, he says, from time to time, I'll find something that I want to change uh, because I know slow, but most changes come from taking a given save file and running it with the profile attached saying what's actually taking up the time. Uh, and here's, here, so finally, and totally unrelated, do you have, uh, do you know if there's any plans to extend the in-game of Factory in future? Nothing that I know before 1.0. So, uh, yeah, kind of a solid answer. I, I, maybe it wasn't this question. He did answer, um, oh, so this is it, I think. Uh, have you guys increased the priority of optimizing the game for uh, more threads? Or is it just impossible because of the way the game is designed? And he says, we've tested running some things on multiple cores, but the need for determinization, uh, determinism, sorry, and the uh, dependent state of virtually all CPU consuming entities means they don't largely benefit from multiple threads. Not to say that it won't ever happen, but don't expect anything beyond small 10 to 20% improvements at high end in very specific scenarios. Uh, simply put, the game isn't uh, limited by thread count. It's first uh, most limited uh, limited by RAM latency, which is helped slightly by using multiple threads, but not 100% faster by using two threads. And it's highly dependent on what the rest of the factory is doing. So that's the thing I was looking for, you know, for the multi-threading, that's kind of why they don't do it. First of all, it would be very difficult from what they've said previously. And two, it wouldn't be nearly as big of a, uh, like, increase in performance as people think. Uh, RAM latency is very important. I can certainly attest to that. Uh, when I upgraded my RAM, I saw a huge difference. Like, it is actually really, really important. If you're looking to get a uh, better performance out of your game, uh, then I would definitely look into getting... Uh, faster RAM with better RAM latency uh, rather than, you know, most anything else that, that that's going to have the biggest impact. So there you go, guys. Uh, I, I thought this would be something different. If you watch to the end, congrats. I know it was a little long, but some really uh, interesting information in here, at least to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts in regards to any of this down in the comments. And, uh, and there you go. So more just actual factorial gameplay, of course, as always, uh, coming soon. But I just wanted to... Uh, do something new for today and uh we'll call it there so as always thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed and i will see you next time take care